Well, before we say anything else, I just wanted to say thank you for over 50 years of wonderful performances and thank laughter you. and great good times. Thank you. Very fun. Thank you. I'm still doing it, you know. Uh huh. Uh -huh. I'm retired, in spite of the fact that my agent thinks I have. <laughs> in your uh, in the book, you write a lot about your childhood and your boyhood here in Palm Beach County. Yes. And I came here 30 some years ago, so I came to a completely different environment than you knew as a kid growing up. When you look around now, do you see any? Do you see any of the Palm Beach County you grew up with, or is it all completely changed? Oh no, it's it's changed enormously. Uh, the only thing that hasn't changed, <laughs> the only thing that hasn't changed is the warmth and good feeling that I feel towards the people here and the city. Mm. My life is so screwed up <laughs> that when I used to land here, my blood pressure used to go, <laughs> and I felt so good to be home. This was home. Mm -hmm. So I finally said, the hell with it, I'm moving it out here. Why do I have to fly to get my blood pressure down? <laughs> and uh, I love it here so much, the people, the place, and everything. What do you think it is about this area, this county, Palm Beach, that centers you, that makes you, that sloughs off the, the terrible cares of the world? Well, first of all, uh, your BS barometer is handed to you very early down here. <laughs> you could put it away in summer. But usually, uh, I, you grow up pretty quick about things and people and all that. And there's some wonderful writers here. You know. uh, I'm sitting with one, and there's my friend down here. Boy, I adore her, and uh, we've known each other forever. And your friendships in the press can be, they can turn on you, you know, but nobody has you yet. <laughs> you write a lot about your dad in your book, who yes. is clearly one of the, if not the most important influence uh, on your life. And there's, there's, there's respect in the book, there's love, and there's, there's something else. Were you a little frightened of him? A lot. <laughs> he was, he was in the war, and he lost <laughs> a lot of men in his battalion. Was he in the European front, Italian? Yes. He was in five major battles there. And he came home after dodging all those bullets. And he comes the chief police. Oh, he's dodging more bullets. So he's in Riviera or Rivera or wherever you have a long dinner. It's Rivera. Uh, and uh, he cleaned that place up pretty good. Real good. And they loved him. And he always hated the fact that the black section didn't have police force. And so they got a police force on him. And a chief. And chased everything for him. And along with that, they got the blue hair and bar, which is pretty frightening. I think there's people in there still lying behind chairs. <laughs> But that was right across the street from the drugstore that my mother ran. And it was, uh, it was a tough place. Mm. But you, if you could grow up in this town and not get too stupid uh, and carried away by it all, you can, this is the, the greatest place in the world. So uh, my best friend. There's a guy named Mo Mustang. I always hated him because I wanted his name. 
Mo Mustang, what a great name. And uh, he pl when, he, when I, went, I played offense on the football team, and he, was, he came in for me on defense. And he was a stolen killer. And I always thought, maybe he should wear my jersey. And I get credit for all those tackles. <laughs> <laughs> but he still Very close. So when a, what does a guy who's been through five major battles in World War II and cleaned up Riviera Beach do when his kid tells him he wants to be an actor? Well, first of all, he thought I was, had to go to a psychiatrist. I, I was in, he got, he got used to it a little bit when he met some of my friends, the actors that he met, he was very, much impressed with a lot. Who, can, who impressed him, who convinced him that this was a reasonable profession for a grown man? Yeah. Ossie Davis, mm. Ricardo Montalba. Uh -huh. uh, Ricardo always made you feel like your back was broken. You said like this. And he made it look like it was normal. And he was, a, he was an amazing, sweet man. His wife was Loretta Young's sister. Georgian? Georgian. Georgian. Who I have been in love with forever. And uh, we see each other. It's a lot of sexual tension. <laughs> I like that. There's a lot of that going around. Is there? I was watching some old gun smokes with you as Quint Asper. Uh -huh. And what's, what was interesting, and I never watched the show because I was 10 years old and they wouldn't let me watch it because there was too much gunplay. But it was interesting to see you at that stage and you're already Burt Reynolds. You already pop through the screen. You know, you got your looks, you got your attitude. You, you, you're a good actor at a very young age. And it just struck me as interesting that you were so fully formed as an actor so young. You know, a lot of it started right here. I did two plays here. One was Bust Up. And I remember in the audience was Tennessee Williams. And I, I saw him, he was charming, wonderful. I said, why are you here? You didn't write this. And he said, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but he was charming. And uh, I always wanted to do the things that he wrote, but I, I couldn't do something that Marlon Brando did. I looked too much like him as a young actor. And he disliked me enormously for that. Because you looked like him. Yeah, I, I, I didn't know what to do. I he, thought you had, he thought you were doing this intentionally? Yeah, yeah, right. I think if I, I got in a big fight and everything was all kind of hanging out, but I could have gone by and see him and he would have been very warm. But I, I didn't, uh, and if I did anything that he thought was his, he thought this was his. You know? mm -hmm. So I never did that. I do that a lot at home. <laughs> Where's breakfast? <laughs> but I just didn't do... And Marlon was a genius. My lord, we can't ignore that. But streetcar is untouchable because it belongs to him. You can't do it. I mean, you're going to get compared. Yeah, no other actor has... A lot of actors have done it, but nobody has made anybody forget Marlon Brando. No, no. Probably never will. Never will, I don't think. What were your, at this point, at that point in your career, you're a young actor in Hollywood, you've got a, a, a supporting role on a huge hit series. What was your idea of your own career? Were you, did you want to be a working actor? Did you want to be a movie star? 
what were what was how were you formulating the plan? I I wanted to be a working actor, which is what I was, and I didn't want to. Uh, I didn't even think about being in movies. But Milbert Stowe, Doc, mm -hmm. he said to me, get out of here. I said, why? He said, you're a movie star. Get out of here. And I thought, <laughs> I thought he didn't like my work. But then I thought about it, and I did leave. And by damn if I didn't get a couple movies. Mm -hmm. And a couple of them were pretty good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was Milner and Stone who gave you the confidence to leave the nest of, of Gunsmoke. Yes, and that was a beautiful nest. Oh, it was. You could have gone on that for 10 more years. One. One thing about that set was it was no ego. That was because of Jim and and Amanda and Doc. I mean, they were all just so wonderful. Uh, but I knew that I wasn't Chester. Chester was gone. Never looking for Chester. Well, along came this guy playing Festus, and I was dead in the water. Ken Curtis. Yeah. Ken Curtis, who is. Uh, a lot of people don't know, was originally one of the sons of the pioneers. That's right. That's and right. what a voice. He was a gorgeous singer. And John Ford's son in law. That's right. Yeah. Hmm. After your career took off, I remember watching you on the Tonight Show when you were host, sometimes when you were co when you were guest host on the Tonight Show. And you gave every indication of being on top of the world. You just radiated pleasure and confidence and you were just seemed to be having the best time a guy could possibly have. Were you re was that an authentic projection of what you were feeling at that point or were you acting? No, I'm not that good at acting. <laughs> <laughs> I was feeling great, really. I was happy and working and there was a lot of talk going on. And I didn't know quite why, but it was... I mean, buzz. It was a buzz, yeah. 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 And it what basically was, get off that show, you know what he said? And, uh, and then I got uh, a movie or two that were very successful. And then I worked with Sally Field. Mm -hmm. And fell so in love, it was a joke. And uh, she didn't get it, but. <laughs> the joke or the love? Well, well both. <laughs> but we're really close friends still, and uh, I think that's about it. For hmm. You talk, yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. Hmm? No, go ahead. you'd be happy for that, I mean, it's good. You talk about the movies that you're really glad you made. Uh, uh, Deliverance, Starting Over, Longest Yard. I would add Sharky's Machine. Yes. Love the picture. And you directed that, but I want to ask you about that later. Um, were there any movies looking back that you regret? <laughs> As a star. I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about Navajo Joe, when you, you know, when you were treading water. I mean, after you hit it big. Yeah. Uh, if I had to do over again, I wouldn't do them, but uh, I, I, was, I, I was always under the impression, and I still am, that working makes you a better actor. Yeah. So do it. Just do it. And shut up and don't complain. A lot of people aren't getting any office at all, and I, I was doing it. And I, I met along the way these wonderful friends who are still my friends. John Boyd was just about perfect. Why the hell does he run for something? <laughs> uh, he, he is one of the nicest, smartest actors I know. Mm -hmm. And a hell of an actor. A hell of an actor. He's got to watch his daughter. <laughs> <laughs> no. 
everybody else is, he might as well. Sure, sure, sure. The, 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 the consensus favorite for the best film you ever made is Deliverance, which I, I hate to uh, echo conventional wisdom, but I would agree. But my second favorite of your pictures is The Longest Yard. Because it's the only movie I know of that got the visceral pleasure that football gives. Yeah. And I, I attribute that to the fact that you played, Robert Aldridge played football, the director, and it was made by people who understood it, it, what that gives to a man to be part of a team and playing that sport. I remember the first day we had a scrimmage and I got hit out of bounds. Out of bounds? Out of bounds. <laughs> and I tore my helmet off and rubbed my face in the dirt. And I pulled it, tried to pull the guy's hand off. And I looked at it, it was Ray Nitschke. And I said, Ray, it's just a movie. <laughs> and he, he said, not to me. <laughs> so I was running for my life. <laughs> Those were real runs, and they were you know, fast, because how would you like to have that back So they didn't let up on you because you were moving Nobody let up on me. The whole, what there was, was, was very sweet, actually. You could call that sweet. After about four weeks of that, yeah. we had a party every Saturday night. And Ray got up and said, Reynolds, tough SOP. <laughs> and you could make it in my record. And I stood up and said, well, you already made it in my record. So it's equal pay. He said, not quite. <laughs> but he was so special. My Lord was special. Did, the, did those guys, the, 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 the ex-pro football players, did Aldrich let them block the plays themselves or were they given the plays? They were given the plays. Okay. Because all the cameramen, he had three or four on, on every shot. Right. Running, running. But they, I must say, every play was for your life, you know. <laughs> and. What gave me pleasure was that they weren't pulling back when I hit them. Nobody laid me down like that. Mm -hmm. They shoved me down, stepped on me. <laughs> but at the end of the picture, I had friends for life. Mm -hmm. It's like I, I played a secret season with these guys. And when I see them now, it's so warm and wonderful. And they're better prepared for life than most actors are when it's over. Because it's over at a certain time. You can't go on being, you know, a movie star. It stops. And when it stops, you've got to be ready to, you know, have a life. And I was ready. I thought it was going to stop long before it did. But when it did, I was ready. So it wasn't a hard transition for you? Not at all. Not at all. I've got such great friends here. And the friends that I have, the actors that I love, they come down here. Mm -hmm. So we go out and we cause a big fuss because they couldn't care less. They've seen me every day for breakfast. But I walk in there with the caramels, button and they go crazy. <laughs> and he's so charming, you want to slap. You directed some good pictures. Uh, I mentioned Sharky's Machine. I love the end. The audacious black comedy that didn't get enough credit uh, when it came out. Um, was directing was that when, were, were you thinking about trying to make a transition away from being a leading man when you hit a certain age and becoming a director full time? Was yes. that why you were starting to direct at that point? In your yes, and it's the most fun I ever had directing. Really? 
it was so close to coaching, which I thought I would end up doing. And, uh, and I just loved it. And I, I was good at it. I brought the films in ahead of schedule. And I think they were pretty good. The end was one of those impossible scripts to be commercial. Mm -hmm. It's a comedy about death. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it, it came out and made, made quite a bit of money. I mean, everybody in it was so wonderful. Remember Carl Ryan? Mm -hmm. He was sensational. And he had <laughs> He's talking to me about Liv. Now, Liv, Liv. <laughs> <laughs> it was brilliant. Did, when you were, well, for instance, working with Carl Ryan, who did, there's nothing about comedy he doesn't know. Yes. Would you just let him go, or, or how much direction would you give a master comedian like Carl Ryan? I let him go. Really? Let him go. And wherever he moved around, I compensate for him and the camera. And, uh, and he, he really loved me for that. Does and directing come from a different place than acting? Is it what I'm sorry? Does directing come from a different place than acting? Yes. You've got to put your ego. Your ego keeps you going as an actor because it, uh, no matter how much people put you down for it, you have to have it to keep afloat. But when you're directing, the thing that works for me is that I'll take a young actor who's giving some people a hard time for whatever reason. And I'll say, son, I was there where you are. And I never gave anybody. That's why I'm here now, setting, talking to you, telling you what to do. And you're just something going, okay. <laughs> and you've got to keep it in check. And you've got to love your friends, love your fellow actors, but the director, is the man. And you don't have enough respect for the man. You don't have it. In the book, you say that you didn't marry two women you adored, and you did marry a woman you weren't even sure you liked. <laughs> and I can see. Could you give me a little bit more? <laughs> well, I think you summed it all up, Scott. <laughs> I didn't like her even a little bit. But she sure was a shiny little thing. But, you know, I just remember an hour and a half of taking makeup off and then putting something else on him to go to bed. And by that time, I was. <laughs> and I, I tried to get her to stop it with the makeup, because, you know, you're a beautiful girl. You don't have to put it on with a trowel. <laughs> and, uh, she, she never thought that. Which, I, you know, I guess in some ways you gotta give her some credit. She, she wasn't as hung up on her looks as everybody thought she was. Which is why I, I liked her enormously. And she was smart. She was a menza. Mm -hmm. And if you, people don't know what a menza is, it's super high, high, high IQ. And her daughter was a menza. And graduated from UCLA, number one in her class. Uh, she, she was a, an amazing lady, but she's not acting anymore. She just gave it up, and she married her high school sweetheart. Now, I wonder if he's surprised by the amount of time. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't beat her up. I should have, you know. She was here now, she could bear it. What was it about Sally Field that made her so special in your life? Everything. Mm -hmm. 
when they asked me who I thought would be great, I said, Sally Field. And they said, well, she doesn't have any sex of you. And I said, you guys don't get it. You're thinking about the flying nun and, and whatever. But she is so talented. And talent is sexy. And she's got it. Someday, she'll prove it. Well, if I got an Oscar and an Emmy and an Oscar, I couldn't match her man. She got four of them. It's amazing. She's going to get another one. They're always talk, talking about this picture, the Tommy she got. And I, I respect her and liked her. And it was just a, a fabulous time together. I screwed it up, I'm sure. <laughs> the great thing about movies is they're forever. Yeah. And the bad thing about movies is they're forever. <laughs> because every once in a while, and I know this from some actors I've gotten to know very well, they see something they did 30 or 40 years ago and they go, what was I thinking? That's awful. Mm -hmm. When you look at yourself in a movie you made 30 or 40 years ago, do you critique yourself? I can't look at it. I really can't. I couldn't look at him then. Why the hell do you think I did that? <laughs> you didn't look at your movies when they were coming out? Oh, no. No? No, no. no. Only when I'm directing, I have to go to Russia. But I don't, uh, I don't look at them. I not only don't look at them, I don't like them. And I think, were you always like that? Or did that grow on you over time? It grew on me, really, and I got smarter. I figured it out that, you know, you're, you're damn lucky. I don't know how long are you going to have this kind of luck. But as long as you have it, have fun with it, and try to have some class and a little bit of grace with people. But don't, um, don't start believing it because you'll crash and burn. I had too many good friends that did that. Good friends. I mean, you think you're, people, you get to think you're golden and everything you do is spectacular? Yes. I had some great friends that could have gone on to very illustrious careers as they grew older, but they, they didn't know that, I guess, or something, but they... Growing old for actors is frightening. Not just actors, but actresses, actors. But they, they don't know how to handle it. And, you know, I'm, I'm not saying that I do, but I live in the floor. And that's why. Because out there, it's crazy. It's crazy. Everywhere you go, First, it's, no, we don't have a table. And then, suddenly, <laughs> what table do you want? And then, it's, we don't have a table. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be able to handle it. Yeah. And I think that's the biggest test out there, because the whole, how knows. I'm saying you're up for so and so. How do they know that before I know? But they're right, usually not in certain time. You know, Scott, my best friends were my age when we started. Most of them have crashed and burned. And I miss them. But they didn't know how to handle, no, we don't have a table. They couldn't handle that. I was amused by that guy. I've always been able to save my butt by laughing. Um, I just ask with everyone, I know there's so many questions, really think about your question. We want to hear first, Mr. 
Reynolds' life story. I'm calling her, we call him the backstage. But we want to hear things about his life, so please be aware of that when you ask your question. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Reynolds, what would you say to, uh, if you had to li live your life over or go back, what would you tell Burt Reynolds from your high school, uh, that Burt Reynolds in high school, what advice would you give him? Well, I tell him, you might want to think about it a little <laughs> when you jump into the arena. And I had long wanted to be a coach so bad. But you, you do have to graduate from college. I suppose you could coach about that, but uh, I, I, I didn't graduate. And I, I coached a little bit. In fact, the coach Bowden was so kind to me that every time I got a call up there, when he was coaching, was he? They, Buddy, take it back to over there. Thrilling. I got so emotional about the fact that he trusted me to coach his back to you. And I want to tell you, they were pretty damn good. <laughs> they won a lot of games. And I like to think I gave him just a chance when you're, when you're talking to somebody that's been there, it's like when you talk to a veteran that's been shot at, sometimes hit. The way they talk about, the way they talked about my dad <coughs> was such love. And he was rough. He was rough on me. He didn't take any prisoners. When I came home at night, if it was past a certain time, I thought the man never sleeps. <laughs> <laughs> came in the front door and <laughs> he'd be looking at me from a chair. Where in the hell have you been? <laughs> well, sir, I was, well, I was a lady, and then the place closed, and then we went to the beach. It's so beautiful, Dad. I don't know if you've seen the full moon. <laughs> <laughs> he said, shut up. <laughs> well, I didn't get away with that too much. I mean, I couldn't talk my way out of anything. Another question? something about it. 
Life isn't over because you got a bad review. You, you may think it is. But everybody doesn't know about it. I remember I got the worst reviews known to man for a couple of things. I, I was embarrassed to go to dinner. But I go to dinner, people came over and said, I love that movie. And I thought, well, first of all, I wish you were writing. <laughs> I wish you were writing for somebody, but I appreciate that. And in the long run, that's what matters. I was number one in a box office for four years. I didn't know what. I was scared. This is going to go away sometime, Bert. Wake up. So enjoy it. And I did. I enjoyed the help. Okay, next question. Let's see. This gentleman in the back here in the middle room, could you hand him the microphone? Hi. Uh, which have you learned more from by doing? Comedy or drama? Well, I, comedy came easier for me. I don't know why, but it just did. I, I guess because I was a little swirly going up. And, and I was the class comedian and all that. And I, uh, it got me out of trouble and into trouble. But it was very prominent in my young life. And when I got on film, I had many a discussion with the director about certain things that he wanted me to do that not only weren't funny, but they were pretty disgusting. And I, I would get an argument. Now, that's how you get a reputation as a troublemaker. And I didn't care. I thought, is that right? I'm going to look at this, and I'm going to hate myself for doing it. But more importantly, my dad is going to kick me so hard in the room for saying those things. And I, I must have turned down more words than a lot of people can think of that were not very nice, but I still have to say a lot of them that weren't. Part of the character to talk like that. And I don't know how I got myself into that, but I did. And I, I guess I got out of it all right, but it was pretty stupid. Next question. Oh, uh, Roman, what was the hustle like for Alan? The lovely Lisa Sharkey publisher. Hi, I would love to know your take on popular I don't fit in really well. <laughs> I try, but I don't. I guess that's why you go home. Because for all of its faults, when you go over that bridge, on the other side over there, it never changed. It had faults in 1952. It's got faults now. But the people that you see and the major deeds and the ones I know so well for a hundred years, it seems like, are still there and very warm, very friendly to me. I, I guess that's the reason that I come home, is that I haven't been, I haven't had a lot of, which you would think you'd get a lot of, all the movie stars. You know, well, here's the movie. I never had that. <laughs> well, because oh, must it be hell? <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Oh, Roman, how about the lady on the end here in the back? Bunny. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Who was your best girl in high school? <laughs> I can't 
can't see you, but I got a terrible feeling it was you. <laughs>
remember at our next meeting <laughs> that I warned you to watch out for what you read and what, whether you believe it or not. And unfortunately, it's just not the National Enquirer anymore. It seeped on over into the major leagues. And they write things about friends of mine, athletes. I love athletes. And I get the hell kicked out. But they look at me as somebody <laughs> who's been kicked more than them. And I like that. I haven't really been kicked more than them. Uh, but I've had my share of stuff written about me that wasn't true. There's nothing to do about it. I could sue them, I guess. I, my dear friend Carol Burnett sued. And so it took a year, and she won. You know how much she won? Anybody? One nickel. I said to her, Carol, was it worth it? And she said, Damn yeah, right. <laughs> I love her. And she won. They were lying. They said she was a drunk. She's a lot of things in terms of comedy. But one thing she's never been, ever. I've never even seen her take a drink. And we're, we've been close, close friends for a long, long time. She's very special. So, one more question. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> Don't forget, there will be a book signing following, so you can ask your question and find you the book signing. Burma lived right across the street from you, used to live at Junior Farms. Can you tell me about your memories and what the ranch meant at the end of the Mockingbird Trail? <laughs> well, I, I, loved, I loved it out there, and I, I miss it. That was a great time in my life. I'd go out and get on a horse and you know, ride around and make believe I was good. <laughs> and I did. I had some wonderful, wonderful people out there. And they're out there for the same reason I was. They didn't want to be in the city. And they also understood what life is all about. I mean, if you really want to get some sage advice, go ask a cowboy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, I'm going to end it there. <laughs>